Okay, so we're going to go on to look at the uses and the dangers of static electricity. So, we have many different uses for static electricity, and these are some of the typical examples uh, that you'll find in your physics IGCSE specification. For example, photocopiers and laser printers use static electricity. Uh, when we spray paint cars, we use static electricity to attract the paint to the bodywork. Uh, to filter out particles from factory smoke, we use static electricity. Heart defibrillators use static electricity. We get a buildup of charge that then uh, discharges through the heart. So, uh, let's have a look at some of these examples and how they work. So, how does a photocopier use static electricity? Okay, photocopier, we put a page on top of the glass here to photocopier. Photocopy, we've got a light source underneath. We have a mirror and we have a drum here that turns. We have toner, which is a black powder that becomes the print of the photocopier, photocopy. We have a, a charging bar for the drum to charge the drum. Uh, we have store of paper. Uh, here we have a heater to heat the paper, and here we have the copies coming out the other end. So, how does it use static electricity? First of all, when we switch on the photocopier and it starts up, we have this big drum here that rotates and it rubs on the drum charger, which gives the drum a positive charge all over the surface of the drum as it turns. Put a page to be copied on top and the light source shines light onto the paper. Uh, where there's black, the light gets absorbed and where there's white, the light gets reflected to the mirror. Then the reflected light is shone onto the, the drum and where light hits the drum, it loses its charge. So the lit, the white paper and the light that reflects off the white paper shines onto the drum and the drum loses its positive charge where it gets hit by the light. Where it doesn't get hit by the light, the shadow, letter A there you can see on the drum, keeps its positive charge. The toner is negatively charged and it is then attracted from the toner deposit onto the drum where there's a positive charge. So the toner gets pulled onto those positively charged areas of the drum. The toner then gets pressed onto a piece of paper from the drum. Heater warms up the paper and fuses the toner into the paper to become print and the photocopy comes out the other end. Okay, so you have in your Google Doc an exercise where you have to put in order the events in a table produce uh, when we the, the order of the events as they happen when we're producing a photocopy. So you have a table and you have to put the, the numbers with the events so that they're in the right order uh, and I'll let you do that. How do we spray paint a car using static electricity. So to make sure we paint the whole surface of the car we use static electricity. So the body of the new car is, is painted using a spray gun. The spray gun and the body of the car are attached to a voltage supply, high voltage supply. The car body for example is given a positive charge there and the spray paint is given the droplets of spray paint are given negatively charged. So when the spray paint leaves the nozzle, each droplet has a negative charge. So each droplet is repelled from any neighboring droplets. So the paint doesn't clump together. And as well, then the droplets are going to be attracted from all directions towards the surface of the car. And any bare bits of metal that are showing that have a positive charge will attract droplets of paint, which are negatively charged. And that way we ensure that the paint reaches all different parts of the body and we get a nice even coating and we waste less paint and we don't get drips. Precipitator yeah, in power stations and factories that uh, burn fossil fuels and produce smoke 
we use a precipitate to get rid of the particles in the smoke. So smoke particles pass up the chimney and they pass through a grid that has high voltage. There they pick up from the grid a negative charge. So we get negatively charged smoke particles. We then have to have two positive plates of metal on each side of the chimney. So negatively charged smoke particles get attracted to the positively charged plates. And then every now and again, these plates will be shaken or banged by a hammer so that the smoke particles that have all clumped together on the surface of the plate will fall down to collecting bins so that they can then be disposed of. And we then produce a smoke that doesn't have polluting particles in, in the smoke. Defibrator for starting up heartbeats in a regular way again. <clears throat> So fibrillation is an irregular heart rhythm, often brought on by a heart attack, and it means that the heart is not pumping as it should, so it's not getting blood through lungs and then around the body. So metal pad pads of the defibrillator are placed on the patient's chest, one above the heart and one on the other side, on the side, so that the current between the plates will pass through the heart. The defibrillator is charged with static electricity, and then when we press the button to give the shock, it discharges through the person's heart and in the direction so that it starts up a regular heart rhythm again and it resets the heart to beat normally. Now, um, in, your, in your Google Docs, keep going back and, and, and you've got your photocopiers put in order uh, and then we have uh, some other exercises in the Google Doc and we move on to dangers of static electricity so where we get charge building up this charge could discharge by jumping through the air if we have enough potential difference this produces a spark now sparks not dangerous for it really the shock to a person not really dangerous in any way for electrocuting people but the danger comes if you have a spark that spark could set fire to something or it could set off uh, an explosion if we have an explosive gas. So charge goes up when insulators rub together. For example, if we're refueling aircraft or rolling paper in paper mills or grinding grain in grain stores, uh, this charger can build up and if enough charge builds up then it will discharge producing a spark. In paper mills, uh, we use metal rollers to stop the charge building up. Metal grain chutes, uh, when moving grain from one place to another, will help prevent fires in grain stores because the, the metal chute will conduct away any buildup of charge by the metal. So how can we prevent explosions when we're fueling aircraft? Because aircraft fuel is very volatile, any spark could set it on fire and cause an explosion. We have a metal wire that attaches from the nozzle and the hose to the mm, tanker, uh, the, or the tank of the aircraft. So this metal wire prov provides a path for uh, electricity to flow along, so it prevents the buildup of electrons either on the, on the aircraft or on the hose. So it discharges continuously so there's no build up on a charge on either and there's no sparks produced.